Good morning from the garden. It's the 1st of October, the sun is out, so it seems like a perfect day to film our annual winter squash review. We filmed one uh, almost exactly one year ago about the winter squash varieties that we were growing then, and I will link to the video in the description box. We grew seven different varieties in 2016, and this year we grew our favorite from last year, plus seven new to us or new uh, winter squash varieties. So I'm going to tell you all about how they performed in our garden this year and which one we liked best. After having used the winter squashes that we grew last year over the winter, I can tell you that my absolute favorites were Harrier, the butternut, and what we called mystery squash because it was one that we didn't know what variety it was. So I asked viewers and I asked uh, on Facebook if people could um, maybe could tell me what they thought the variety was and I got some suggestions. And those were Long Island Cheese, Seminole Pumpkin, Enver's and Winter's Luxury Pie. So thank you very much. And I looked these up and I think the most likely is either Enver's or Seminole. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. So I will buy the seeds if I can find them and I will grow these next year because we really liked the mystery squash. It was probably the top one. Uh, it was even sweeter than the butternut and really great, especially in cakes. My second favorite was Harrier, which is a butternut squash bred in Britain. I'm sorry, my husband is making fun of my accent. Um, and therefore it is well suited to our cooler summers. It's the best butternut that I have, of a best butternut, best performing butternut in our climate that I have found. Therefore, we grew three plants this year and we gave two of them the prime spot on the compost heap and those performed really well. You can really see that the compost heap, the, the composting process creates bottom heat which makes the pumpkins or the squashes grow much faster. They set fruit earlier, ripen earlier and they really, therefore we get more fruits per plant than when we grow them. Um, just in the ground. So we had two plants on the compost heaps and one of them we got 10 fruits from and the other one eight. They, uh, according to the seed company, the average weight of the fruit should be about 800 grams, which is 29 ounces or close to two pounds. But uh, almost every butternut we had was uh, heavier than that and some are twice as heavy. And I wrote a blog post last year about how I use the larger butternut squashes to, to turn them into three different dishes. So I will link to that below as well. One problem that we had on the compost heap is that the, some of the fruits um, are kind of uh, split, burst. So I don't know what effect this will have on um, the storage. So I'm using these first. And we did not have that problem with the plant that was growing in the ground. Uh, but the squashes that were on the third, third plant um, started growing much later. The fruit was set later and uh, some of them were probably not ripened anymore. Moving on to this year's varieties. Last year we grew a variety of spaghetti squash, a large, quite large fruited one. And this year I wanted one that would have smaller fruits. So I chose this variety, which is called Small Wonder. And according to the seed company, the fruits uh, were supposed to be around 400 grams, which is close to one pound. But actually they averaged uh, close uh, over 800 grams, which is close to two pounds. So that's twice as big as the seed company said again. It was a different seed company than the Harrier, but I guess that's not really something to complain about. Um, I think they're a pretty good size, if, especially if you have a one person, two person household. It's a good size for two people to share or to use for two meals. Uh, we got eight fruits from one plant, so that's um, quite a good harvest, I'd say. But they do not store as well as some of the other squashes. Um, you can keep them for around three months. And I just like to cut them in half and bake them with salt, butter, uh, pepper and um, scoop out the flesh. Sometimes we serve them with sauce. And the reason they are called spaghetti, if you didn't know, sorry, I should maybe say that first, is because when you cook them, the flesh turns into strands that resemble spaghetti. 
Another new variety that we grew this year is Delicata, which is quite popular in the States, I understand. And I actually grew another type of Delicata squash before, which is called Sweet Dumpling. But it uh, it's also has these pretty uh, green stripes, but it's a different shape. It's one that is very well suited to uh, filling. And in this case, the fruits are smaller than uh, the seed company suggested, but I don't really mind that. Uh, we got eight fruits from the plant. There are still some. I hope they will ripen. And I'm uh, going to try one today. We haven't had one yet, but it's uh, the flesh is supposed to be very good, very good eating quality. And you can cut them in slices and roast them, <laughs> which is what I'm going to do today. Um, they don't store as well. Uh, they, they have about the same storage capacity as the spaghetti squash around three months. Next up, baby blue. It's um, Hubbard squash. It has the typical shape of Hubbard squash, but it's uh, smaller than most. It, uh, we averaged 1.3 kilos, which is uh, around three pounds. And uh, they keep very long, They're, they taste great, and you can use them for pretty much any dish. The downside, we only got two fruits from the plant that we had. So uh, since we only grew one plant, I'm not sure you can really uh, conclude anything from that. And I'll probably grow this one next year as well, just to see how it performs. But yeah, two, two fruits is not a, not a very big harvest. Next one is a squash that I have not grown before. It's North Georgia Candy Roaster, a banana squash. According to our daughter, who has something of a slug phobia, uh, they look a bit like slugs, but oh, I like them. Uh, again, we only had two fruits per plant, but these are huge. So the combined weight was um, nine kilos, I think, uh, which is 19 pounds. So in terms of fruit weight per plant, that's a great result. Only I think I'd rather have five two pound fruits than one 10 pound fruit. Because to, for me, that's much more useful. It's, um, it's difficult in our household to use a squash like this within three, five days. And we don't have a freezer. If you do, then you could probably keep, uh, keep the, some of it in the freezer. So I think unless the taste is spectacular, we'll probably not be growing that one next year. Last year we grew a variety of winter squash called Kakai, which is a hullless variety, one with naked seeds. So that's a variety grown primarily for the seeds. And we got, last year we got uh, 75 to 150 grams of seeds per fruit, which is around three to five ounces. And we grew another variety this year called Penelopa, which has um, a lot bigger fruits. So I was curious how it would compare in terms of uh, weight of seeds per fruit. And we cut one open already and that one yielded 250 grams, which is almost over half a pound of seeds. So that's quite uh, a lot more. And we had three fruits, so in terms of yield, it would outperform, even though we had just fruit, three fruits, um, it would out outperform cacao from last year. Only one of the fruits fell victim to probably rats who got inside and ate all the seeds, which is a problem that we have not had before. We also grew these miniature squashes, which are called gold spec, and they are about eight centimeters um, diameter, which is three to three and a half inches. They're really cute. Uh, they're also edible. I'm thinking about trying to uh, f uh, fill them with rice or quinoa for nice uh, appetizers. They will make really cute meals, but you can of course use them for decoration. I saw them going for 75 cents per fruit in a florist store, so it definitely pays to grow your own. And we grew them up um, TP and that also means that they are safe from the rats that way. The last variety that we grew this year is called Chersonskaya and I was sent the seeds but it's also a bit of a mystery. I could not find a lot of information about it online. Some 
sources mention it as um, Ukrainian modern hybrid variety. Some say it's an Ukrainian heirloom. I don't know, we'll find out. It's supposed to be very sweet and especially suited to making pie. It also has a small crown, so that, likes, uh, that, that looks a bit like the turban uh, varieties of squash. Downside, we only got one fruit. Um, but I really like this one. It feels also heavy, so that means there's probably a lot of flesh in this one. And I think I will try growing it again because one plant in one season is not enough to draw conclusions from. These are all the varieties that we grew in 2017. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And also please let me know what your favorites are and what I should be growing in 2018. Happy gardening!